The basic idea of gears is to convert mechanical power from an rotational speed and torque to another speed and torque. And contrary to what you see here, many machines today often need high torque and low RPM. The linear actuator that I made before can be an example of this. Here I use the mechanical gearbox to reduce the speed of the piston and increase the thrust, so that could lift almost 100 kg. It's well known that mechanical gears are very reliable and very high torques can be achieved with all these drive systems. However, they suffer from some inherent problems, because gear engagement inevitably requires physical contact, and this causes wear on tooth surface or damage to gear tooth. That's why gears must be constantly lubricated and periodically maintained. Also, as you see, they have quite high noise levels because of the high vibration. Since we can get such high torques, we could actually ignore all these problems. But on the other hand, a non-contact gearbox. This video is sponsored by PCBWA. More on them later. Magnetic gears are very similar to conventional mechanical gears in terms of basic principle of operation, geometry and function. The only difference between them is that the physical contact gear engagement in mechanical gears is replaced by magnetic engagement in these gears, which is provided by a magnetic source such as permanent or electromagnet. One of the most common examples of this concept is this high magnet interaction concentric magnetic gearbox. So let's make a prototype. The design basically consists of three concentric rotors and is very similar to mechanical planter gear sets. There are two rotors on the inside and outside that contain permanent magnets and act as sun and ring gears. And between them is a flux modulator that acts as a planet gears. We know that a permanent magnet has two poles, north and south, and the same poles repel each other, but opposite poles attract. In this case, when the sun gear takes a small step and aligns with the next iron segment in the modulator, it attracts the south pole on the ring gear towards itself. Simultaneously, it repels the north pole which is right next to it. These forces create a tangential force in this direction and this force causes the ring gear to rotate. One of the remarkable things about this magnetic concept is that there is absolutely no physical contact between the rotors. The engagement is completely non-contact through magnetic forces, which gives them many advantages, such as much quieter and lubrication-free operation. Speaking of the advantages, PCBWay has many services such as PCB manufacturing, CNC machining or 3D printing. However, they now offer a complete turnkey contract manufacturing service from the design to mass production. And they have a work that can be an example for that in the past months, which is electric floor fan. As you see here, you actually have all the machinery needed for your project, from the circuit boards to CNC machining. Even if you don't have professional machines, it seems that they have a capacity for many different ideas, from the medicine to kitchen applications. Check the link in the description for more on PCB way. So let's start with these strong neodymium magnets. I arranged these magnets on the sun gear as one north and one south polarity, which will rotate at high speed. The next step is to prepare the flux modulator, which is actually a very simple component in appearance and unlike the sun and ring gear, does not have magnet on it. Instead, it consists of ferromagnetic and non-magnetic parts and which plays a key role in the operation of the coaxial magnetic gear. Because if there was no components such as a modulator, the sun and ring gear would rotate together at the same speed and direction, like a magnetic coupling. But thanks to the modulator, the magnetic flux of each sun and ring gear is modulated in the air gaps between them, resulting in the gear ratio. Let's take a closer look at this. The ring gear contains 24 magnets, in other words 12 pole pairs, and these magnets periodically produce a magnetic flux on the inner wall of the ring gear with a wavelength of 12 harmonic order, in other words 30 degrees. The addition of the modulator to the design causes 12 harmonic order flux in the ring gear to be converted into a 4th harmonic, or in other words, the 30 degree wavelength is converted into a 90 degree wavelength. And at the same time, this modulated ring gear flux is transmitted to the inner parts of the modulator, to the sun gear in the center. Here you may think that a gear ratio can be produced, because of the flux of the ring gear is modulated to a different order flux, which it certainly is. But why and how did this flux modulate it to a 4th harmonic order? For the metal segments in the modulator, 
I used exactly 16 screws as many as some of the pole pairs in the Sunderland ring gear. So that these screws arrange at a particular spacing on the modulator, and that caused to have a particular polarity pattern, like south, no field, north, and no field. And if we look at a little closer at this pattern, thanks to the fact that some of the screws here have no magnetic field, we can see that this flux is actually corresponds to a magnetic flux at the fourth harmonic order, with a wavelength of 90 degrees. Long story short, the magnetic flux in the ring gear modulates to fourth order as there were exactly 16 screws in the modulator. So, when the ring gear takes a step or rotates 30 degrees, the modulated ring gear flux on the inside also must take a full step or rotate 90 degrees, which as you see means that the modulated flux must rotate exactly three times faster than the ring gear. This modulated flux is also the same as the flux of the sun gear, which is why the flux of the ring gear is modulated to fourth order. Because finally, with the addition of the sun gear, the modulated ring flux interacts directly with the sun gear and causes to rotate. Notice here that as a result, as you see, the sun gear now rotates three times faster than the ring gear with the modulated flux, resulting in a three times gear ratio between the gears. Alright, let's give it a run. Okay, this is an almost completely silent, location free second order radial flux coaxial magnetic gearbox. Now I'm gonna increase the speed a little bit. It is spinning around 12,000 RPM and the engagement still hasn't broken. Wow, <laughs> that's really pretty awesome. But this is because I increased the speed gradually. If I suddenly increase the speed, it breaks. Ok, so far it's working great, it's just much noisier than I expected, especially at high speeds. Now I'm wondering how long it will last at this speed. So around 9000 rpm and after 10 minutes, only the bearings got a little bit hot, everything else is almost cold. Where is the eddy current? Where are the losses? Why nothing melted? Hmm, that's a little strange. Ok, by the way, I chose the ring gear as the fixed component since it would be difficult to get output from the ring gear. In this case, the sun gear and the modulator are rotating in the same direction. And this also caused the gear ratio to be 4 instead of 3. It's actually just like the mechanical planetary gears. And unlike these spur gear like designs, in this design we have a flux modulator, so at any moment of the engagement, all the magnets can interact with each other and the torque capacity greatly increases. Speaking of the torque capacity, let's take a look at it. By the way, this large printing bed belongs to Artillery Sidewinder X2. This printer was sent by Hacker.com and I printed most of the parts in the project with this printer. Sidewinder X2 is a really high quality and pretty quiet printer. We have a large print volume and heats up very quickly. It also has many important features such as automatic wet leveling and direct drive extruder. Check out the channel for more about the printer, that should be a review video. And there's a discount coupon below, so definitely take a look. It's the fact that mechanical spur gears are so highly efficient that transmit power almost without loss. But it seems that magnetic gears are better at this. Because if we look at the results, we see that there is no loss between the input and output shafts. Ok, this might sound crazy, because there can't be a lossless system. And even if there is no physical contact, 
friction or wear on the magnetic engagement itself. After all, there are three crap bearings in the system and they have to create loss. Even the magnetic coupling itself have eddy currents or have hysteresis losses in the bolts, so it cannot be lossless. Probably the reason why the efficiency is so high is that there is no load on the system. Anyway, we have a more efficient gearbox than mechanical ones, but what I am actually more interested in than efficiency is the limits of this. It's clear that the force will increase as the motor rotates. But right after this peak, the magnets can no longer hold each other, and the connection between them breaks. Normally in the mechanical gears, there should be damage at this point, but there is no damage here. Instead, the magnets just slip over each other and jump to the next magnet. Then the magnets interact again, the force again rises to the maximum point that the magnets can hold but reach the limit and slips again. That's why we see these fluctuations and these are also proof that the magnetic gears have an inherent over torque protection. After a few tests, the peak value is about 200 grams. So before the magnets slip, the maximum force that the torque arm can apply is 200 grams. In this case, the maximum torque is 0.05 newton meter. That's really quite low and not even close to mechanical gears. It seems that it would be better for low torque and high speed applications. But I still think it has a potential because there are many reasons why torque is so low. And one of the reasons is that, as you see, we have a magnetic field outside as well as inside the ring gear. And not using that other one is a great loss. But if I arrange these magnets in a particular way, as you see, almost the entire magnetic field is now inside, which will greatly increase the torque. There are many things that can be improved, but that's all for now. Thanks for watching, see you next time.